Good day everyone. Today's lesson is about distance versus displacement. So here are today's goals. First, we will differentiate distance from displacement. Second, we will determine the distance and displacement of a body in motion. We will begin by defining what is distance. The total length of path traveled by an object or covered by, the, by an object regardless of direction is called distance. While your displacement is the shortest straight line distance from the starting point to the end point, and that will include direction. Again, your displacement only focus about the starting point and the end point or that amount of space or gap from the starting point to the end point together with direction. So let us further analyze this concept using this diagram here. So as you can see, the man walks forward covering 6 meters. After 6 meters, he decided to go back and stops at 2 meter mark away from the starting point. So, how are we going to compare distance from displacement? Or what is the distance traveled by the man? So, since he is moving 6 meters forward and goes back, stops at 2 meter mark, that means 6 meters plus 4 meters as he took a step backward from 6 to 2 meters. So that means 6 plus 4 meters, the distance traveled by the man is equal to 10 meters. So what about the displacement? Is it equal with the distance that we have solved earlier? So that's what we are going to find out next. So for the man's displacement, as I mentioned earlier, we are only going to consider two points. One, the starting position or the initial position and the final position. So at the end of the course, the man stops at two meter mark away from the starting point. Therefore, the displacement of the man is equal to two meters. So how far is the man from the starting point? So from the starting point, the man is 2 meters away from the starting point. And in what direction? That is towards the right. So it's important that when we describe displacement, there should be magnitude and direction. But for distance, we're only going to consider the magnitude or the amount of space the man covered regardless of direction. So let's further analyze the next situation using distance and displacement concept. So in our next scenario, we have here a boy that walks point A to point B for three meters. And then from point B to point C, for another 5 meters, and next from point C to point D. At that point, so when the boy is at point D, question, what is the distance covered by the boy? So in order for us to answer this problem, we are just simply going to add the distance covered by the boy. So 3 meters A to B, 5 meters B to C, that's 8 meters. And then we have we assume that point C to D is 3 meters because that is a mirror or a reflection of point A to B on the other side. So 8 plus 3 meters, we now have a total distance covered is, the total distance covered is 11 meters. Okay, and what is the displacement of the boy. So here we have a total 
different answer totally different response from the first question so since the final position of the boy is point d and the starting position is point a so how much or what is the displacement of the boy from the starting point so that means we are going to measure or we are going to assess from the starting point so in this case that is moving to the right and since that particular distance is a mirror of point b to c so we assume that that is equal to five meters and the direction is to the right so what is the displacement of the boy after the entire course the boy is five meters to the right from the starting point okay moving on we have these key points in today's concept first distance is considered a scalar quantity since it only talks about magnitude without direction on the other hand your displacement is a vector quantity since it has both magnitude and direction another distance depends on the actual path taken regardless of direction while displacement depends only on the initial and final positions that will include the direction so at this point in time i have here some challenge questions that you are going to answer on your own so this will enrich your understanding about the concept of distance and displacement you will answer this in a one-fourth piece of paper question number one which of the following statements is true write your answer in a one-fourth piece of paper question number two or item number two you can always go back with number one um, if you're not done with it number two if a car moves in a straight line without changing direction is its distance and displacement are blank number three a runner completes a full lap around a 400 meter track so it's an oval that has a total distance of 400 meters so the total distance is blank meters but the displacement is blank meters and finally a cyclist moves 12 meters north 5 meters east and then 12 meters south so you can draw a, you can draw a diagram that is implied in this problem so 12 meters going north next 5 meters going east and then finally 12 meters going south so you are going to answer what's the well, answer these questions a what is the total distance travel and b what is the displacement and take note your answer should be complete if it's a magnitude then write the unit for distance you uh, i mean for direction you include what direction is part or what direction that describes your answer okay thank you so much grade 7 for your time and patience in following our video lesson and let me end our session by saying keep going keep growing king huan learnings embrace learning